Like other culturally fragmented, economically backward, and politically disunited peoples around the world, the Slavs of East Central Europe were subjugated in many ways, as serfs owned by their own or foreign nobles, as slaves sold in the slave markets of Europe and the Middle East, and as peoples conquered by the Ottoman, Habsburg, and other empires. Such fates appeared in succession or in combinations over a period of centuries. Most of the Slavs of medieval Europe were for centuries either peasants or animal herders, predominantly the former in the plains and a mixture of the two in the uplands. Initially, when the invading Slavs settled down to agriculture in the 6th and 7th centuries, serfdom was unknown. But in an era when organized national governments had not yet developed in the region, peasants often sought the protection of militarily powerful nobles for physical safety in a chaotic and violent age. Over a period of time, this dependence degenerated into serfdom in much, but not all, of East-Central Europe. Serfdom entailed not merely subservience, but also a loss of the right to move. Serfs who sought to flee were often tortured when captured, sometimes by having their hair set on fire and their noses split. Below the serfs on the social scale were the slaves, the main differences between them being that serfs belonged to the land and were supposed to be sold only jointly with the land, rather than as personal property that could be sold separately anywhere at any time. Moreover, serfs had certain rights, though the fact that most of these rights were enforceable only in courts set up by noble landowners made those rights somewhat tenuous when it came to disputes with those landowners themselves. Slaves, however, lacked even these precarious protections, and could be bought, sold, bartered, or even killed by their owners. Sometimes people were enslaved locally for crimes or for debt, and some poverty-stricken peasants sold their children into slavery in order to survive when the family could not feed itself. The institution of slavery was common within East-Central Europe, and foreign marauders and conquering armies also carried off Slavs into bondage in other lands, including Spain, Germany, Egypt, and Syria. An international study of slavery described the Dalmatian coast as one of the most continuously productive sources of slaves in human history, drawing not only from the largely Slavic population of that region, but also from Slavic and other peoples from farther east in the Caucasus and the Balkans. Centuries before the first African was carried in bondage to the Western Hemisphere, Slavs were being enslaved on a massive scale. Russians by the hundreds of thousands being enslaved by Turkish raiders, and Slavs along the Dalmatian coast being enslaved by other Europeans for at least six centuries, while various groups of Slavs sold one another into bondage, as well as competing with Iranians, Turks, and others to enslave before being enslaved. Slavs were so widely sold into bondage that the very word for slave was derived from the word for Slav in a number of Western European languages, as well as in Arabic. Behind this history lay a set of geographical factors. Like other long-lasting slave export areas, the Dinaric Highlands had certain environmental features that fostered poverty, population pressure, political fragmentation, and conflict. A coastal ridge rises like a wall from the sea. Further inland, other ridges form folds parallel to the Adriatic. They effectively separate the inhabited regions into long, narrow valleys called polya, each isolated from the other by barren mountain chains where pasture is scant, communication difficult. The few rivers that pierce the walls are unnavigable. The narrow gorges they cut could not until recently be used by wheeled vehicles. Because of the complexity of the mountain environment, however, natural disasters were usually local, sometimes confined to a single valley. This resulted in an intense competition for resources, most often expressed through banditry and feud. While the geography of this area differed in various ways from that of Africa, the net effects of that geography on the people were quite similar in producing a cultural and political disunity that made both peoples vulnerable and prey to outsiders. As in the case of Africa, those who did the capturing of people were not usually the same as those who engaged in the trading of slaves. In both regions, as well as in other parts of the world, warriors, brigands, and pirates initially captured the people, 
while ordinary merchants then included slaves among the merchandise that they sold. Thus much of the slave trade of medieval Europe was carried on by Jews, though many of the slave trading centers were in such Christian strongholds as Venice and Dubrovnik, just as merchant peoples such as the overseas Chinese in Southeast Asia or the Yao in Central Africa also included their fellow human beings among the merchandise they sold. Nor was this practice at all controversial at the time. Within East Central Europe itself, local noblemen found that serfdom was more profitable than slavery, which accordingly began dying out in the later Middle Ages. As for people being enslaved by outsiders, the consolidation of strong territorial states in the late medieval and early modern era was a key factor in the decline of such enslavement in Eastern Europe as in other parts of the world. The rise of the Muscovite state meant that anyone attempting to enslave Russians now faced a national army, and the rise of other territorial states in Eastern Europe likewise surrounded their peoples with military power too formidable for marauders to confront. The difficulties of establishing such large nation-states in the rugged uplands of the Balkans left the peoples of this area vulnerable longer. However, the establishment of states in this region, and of empires ruling over this region, ended its role as a major source of slaves. By the time Western Europeans established colonies across the Atlantic and sought to have much of the work there done by slaves, Africa was one of the few remaining viable sources. The conquests of the Ottoman Empire in medieval southeastern Europe brought many Slavs under the dominion of the Turks whose exactions included a regular levy of male children, who were taken away as slaves to be converted to Islam and trained for military posts in the corps of the Janissaries or in various civil positions as functionaries of the Ottoman government. Between 15,000 and 20,000 children were taken away from their parents during the thirty-year reign of Sultan Muhammad the Conqueror in the 15th century, for example, and the practice did not die out until the latter part of the seventeenth century, by which time approximately two hundred thousand boys had been taken from their families in this way. Not all these children were Slavs, since this human levy applied to conquered Christians in general, but in practice many of these children were Slavs, and relatively few were Greeks or Armenians. Ottoman rule in the Balkans lasted five centuries and left a lasting imprint on the subsequent history of the region. To varying degrees and for varying lengths of time, it removed many Europeans from the cultural development of the rest of Europe at a crucial time in the evolution of the continent. Like all non-Moslem conquered peoples in the Ottoman Empire, the Slavs were explicitly assigned a lower position in the laws and policies of the empire. Moreover, even within the Christian community, recognized officially by the Ottoman authorities, the Slavs were assigned to be part of the Greek Orthodox structure, making them subordinate in both religious and secular matters to the Greeks. However, conditions following the Ottoman conquests were usually better than the conditions on the eve of that conquest for the vast majority of the peoples of southeastern Europe. For all its harsh and unequal laws, the Ottoman Empire did establish the rule of law in an area previously devastated and disorganized by warfare and among people previously living under the arbitrary caprices of their own nobles. With these nobles forced to flee in the wake of Ottoman conquest, and with Ottoman laws making the lot of the peasant less onerous, serfdom no longer existed under the Ottomans, for example, there was initially no substantial popular resistance for being ruled from Istanbul. Only in the later centuries of the empire, when control from the top was weakened and subordinate officials in Istanbul and in the provinces gained more power and became more corrupt and overbearing toward the people under them, did resistance to Ottoman rule begin to become serious among the Slavs and among the other peoples of southeastern Europe. Although southeastern Europe was racked for centuries by wars between various Christian European rulers and the Ottoman Empire, the division was by no means always neatly split along either religious or ethnic lines. When Sultan Bayezid I fought against the Hungarians and Wallachians in the 14th century, for example, his troops included Serbs. Moreover, the vassals of the Ottoman Empire usually included Christian princes, who were expected to fight alongside the Ottoman Turks, and often did so in practice. 